Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's David and I've got a painting challenge coming up so I'd better limber up the old fingers and get back into the swing of painting miniatures. This time we're going to go for something a little bit more common. We're going to try a squad of troops. So follow me chaps! Now, the last force you saw me painting were Cybermen from Doctor Who. And what better opposition for them than good old unit? To help me in that endeavour, I have some frames here. I've got two frames. These are from Warlord Games. It's their bolt action line. And I have a frame of World War II British Airborne and World War II British Infantry. I'm going to be swapping parts from each to make up a squad and then we'll we'll get on painting them. So there's a quick picture of the frames that I'm going to be using. As you can see there's a really good selection of parts, you always get that from Warlords Games miniatures. And I'm going to be interchanging them between the figures just so that I've got a, a nice selection of poses and things like that. So there's a few minor conversions that I need to do to change these from World War II troops to um, 1970s sci-fi unit troops and the main thing is to remove the airborne insignias from the caps on this frame. Because of the fact that it is small and fiddly work especially when it's just a, a head and you're trying to you know carve things off while you've got that in your fingers I have actually left them on the sprues. So we've got a nice sharp craft knife and all I'm going to do is just very gently scrape with the blade so I'm not cutting I'm just scraping I guess you could do this with a file but I find it far easier with a blade and just clean that off in exactly the same way that you would if you were um, cleaning excess flash off around the edges okay so I'll get on with these and the other thing that I need to do on this one um, because they are going to be using sterling submachine guns some of them because they are in battle have got bayonets attached to the end so I'll clip those off because unit never used bayonets I'll crack on with these and then start getting them assembled so the chaps have been converted assembled and based all of the cap insignias have been removed and they have had round unit badges put on in their place. If you want to know how I did that, it was using one of these. This is a 1.5mm hole punch and I just used the little excess bits from the inside. Um, it was reclaimed um, sort of plastic packaging that I used for those. So they've been glued in place. You'll have seen those in the photo. These are now ready to go off for an undercoat and then the first base coat and for that I am going to be using this it's a Tamiya spray it is olive drab they're going to be done all over in that at the point where I start using this I will start the timer I'm not going to show you me spray painting because you've seen that plenty of times already but I'll get on with it and then we'll get back to the proper painting right I'm not going to go massively overboard on um, painting on this session because it's been a really long day already um, but as you can see the base coat of olive drab has been done and just over 1 minute 30 seconds to to get the spray coat on as last time I have my paints set up in the order that I'm going to be using them hopefully I'll be able to get them to at least the sort of minimum uh, three color by the time this fi session finishes. Let's resume that and we're going to start off with just a, a quick dry brush all over with a lighter green and it's going to be a very very light dry brush because I don't want that sort of dark being diluted all that much. Try and remove these. 
now that's broken in a poor kit just to get a wee bit of highlighting on these uh, on these uniforms and we're going to be going over with a wash coat later on just to dull it all back down again okay actual colours now it's time for some black so this is essentially going to be the base of metal on any of the weapons and of course their boots we'll get all the boots done and then I'll come back and do the weaponry so we've got the boots done we've got the undercoat on the metal now I'm just going to give it a quick dry brush over the metal parts with I'll have to get that on charge um, with some metal colour and while I'm trying to be very careful not to get it on the um, green of the uniform when it comes to people's hands or things like that I am not too worried because obviously the flash colour for those has not yet been painted now I'm going to dull that metal back down with a spot of black ink right best take a quick breather there grab a cuppa stop the clock and get some charge on my cell phone right where are we at we are going to do the wood on any of the guns that need it I'll choose a small brush for this I've chosen a finer brush because I am having to go around some of the metal parts that I've already dry brushed over now it may seem as if I've chosen quite a light coloured wood which I have but on the understanding that it's going to be getting a darker wash to tone it down later on in the piece last coat of paint for tonight eagle eyed viewers will notice that I swapped this one in the other pot is a lighter colour and I wanted this darker so let's get hands and things like that painted in Stop it there, where are we? Almost an hour and ten minutes. I did have to go over the flesh twice. For some reason this must be a bit on the thin side and the base green was still showing through. However, we're certainly up to three colour minimum. You can tell that they are soldiers and people. So I'll leave it there for the night, get some dinner and do a second session, hopefully to finish them off tomorrow. So, second session. Let's get back into it and checking the paint guide, I actually missed a bit on the Lee Enfield rifles there is a bit on the top that I have to redo just so this is camo green and what we're gonna do is just use this to lighten up things like the um, straps and webbing and pouches and things like that because that is what it looks like has been done in the painting guide I'm not going overboard and blocking this in it's almost more like a little bit of a highlight and now how we track them to time not bad hopefully I want to manage to get all of this done in one sitting right there's a few ropes and things like that on some of the airborne ones so we'll just get them marked in okay i'll take a quick couple of minutes break there getting there a little bit of color mixing this time so now we are on to here bit of that done that and where are you there you are Okay, moustache. Aye, aye, that's good. I'll need the red further down the track. Yellow's out of the way. I'm not worrying too much about going up onto the berries because they need a recoat in any case. Um, right, oh, I'll do one more of these. Actually. 
just rearrange so I know which ones have been done. There, there, there. Alright. Hey, all done. What do I want now? I want just to darken this one down. Alright. Good. How's the time going? Oh, hour 45. More mixy time. I want some of that, definitely, and I want some of that. I'm going to use a big brush this time because I want a reasonable amount of it. Let's see if we can't use some of this to just take it down to a nice maroon colour. Yes, I'd say I'm happy with that. Let's get these hats done. And for some reason, red never wants to go on on a single coat, so this is going to be a two coat job again. All right, but it's getting there. Okay, we are definitely heading, I feel, towards the final stretch, but I get the feeling I'm not going to get them all done tonight. But there are two more coats that I do want to do tonight, and then it is going to be final touch-ups. Now, looking at the uniform pictures of unit troops, they do differ from uh, World War II infantry, and that is in the colour of the leather on their belts. So I am going to start off with red, and this is just for the belts, and because it's a very fine line on all of the miniatures, I've swapped to a really fine brush, because at this stage I do not want to be going over the lines. And of course, as I was doing that, I realised that there is a whole colour that I've managed to miss. Some of that, because I need to do the straps on the weapons. No, that's too thin. i use this. You don't, you don't. You do. And now I need another mixing pot and some clean water. Final coat for the night, mixing pot, clean water, light brush. And this is flesh wash. Now, this is a shading technique that is relatively popular because it covers an absolute multitude of sins. So it's a very small, it's a very watered down flesh wash. I don't know what they call it nowadays, it might be known oil. You can get dips and you open the pot and just dip it in and it basically shades the whole miniature for you. And that is all I am going to do. The whole lot gets a once over, just to dull everything down and get a little bit of shadow in all of the creases, and then that gets left to dry overnight. All right, that's the wash on, and let us stop it there. How are we doing? Two hours, oh, close to 30. It's about, what, 15 minutes per miniature so far? Maybe something like that. All right, these are going to have to dry overnight. Um, I had forgotten about that stage, but it's a good natural stopping point. So I will pick this up again tomorrow for the very, very final stretch. And it is basically just detailing work. Oh, okay, where are we at? Day three, six colours left. Some of which are because I forgot some pertinent details. And to be perfectly honest, it is mainly just detail work. So we will start the clock. Now, this one is a treasured possession because I've got hardly any of it left. But this is a very old pot of chestnut wash. And I'm going to use this to darken the belt leather. Yes, that is definitely what I was after there. Actually, I can't recall whether or not I told you about another minor conversion that I did. There are two officers within the unit, Captain Mike Yates, and of course the chap himself, Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart. And both of those around one shoulder have red cord, obviously to signify officership of some form of description. I'll show you a, a photo of that. And I did add that um, simply by gluing on a piece of cotton. But when I had the red out, I completely forgot to paint it in. Speaking of officership, both them and Sergeant Benton do have other rank markings, which I need to try and apply. It's going to be difficult. Mm, can hardly see it. However, at least I know it's there. Oh, entering the final stretch. Can I do it within 
three hours. Here's hoping. Let's just do a bit of a touch up to highlight the skin tones. So this is more realistically over brushing, just to pick out the top areas of skin. What is it, Strax? I just realised I forgot another colour. Oh no! Hello, Brig. You gonna say hi to the camera? Yes. Whoa, kittens. Brig. Hmm. Named after Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart. Ha! There you go. That's that last colour I needed. I'm just going to get a touch more water on that so that I can flow just that little bit easier. That's better. Oh. Hmm. Well, only just shy of hitting the three hour mark. But of course, there is one final colour. And this is it, I promise. Because we just need to set off those unit cap badges. Like so. And the clock stops right there. Let's take some photos. Oh, well, that was far more like hard work than I expected it to be. However, hard work paid off and a little bit over three hours, basically an evening, and I've got a squad of 11 all painted up and ready to go. Yes, it was cut over three sessions, um, but that's all good. They are off the pile of shame and onto the completed pile. And it's probably a good job as well because these guys, I got one of the, the frames free from a, a bulk load of stuff from Warlord Games. Um, they're really good like that. And I thought, oh, I know exactly what I'll, I'll use those for. Um, bought another sprue to go with them. And then they kind of sat there and, well, I'm, I'm glad that I've got round to them. Let me put it that way. Normally, after a job like that, and I don't know what it is about um, humans, just people or military, that I find so difficult or find such hard work painting. Um, I'm far better with monsters and, and aliens and things like that. Um, however, after a hard session like that, I would normally be treating myself with a character model or a vehicle or something like that. Remember those rules about bulk painting that I said back at the start? Unfortunately, I do not have the opportunity to do that because I have more bulk painting in very short order. So, if you wish to join me for the Terminator Genesis Force creation painting guides, videos, whatever you want to call them, the challenge, then please hit the like and subscribe and get notifications and I will be seeing you very shortly. Bye for now.